Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. E.G. Marshall. In the listing of the seven deadly sins, the third one is usually envy. But envy has a sister, jealousy. So very like her twin, and yet in many ways so different. For jealousy is a very special sickness that lies between a man and a woman, and which since time immemorial has caused the death of love. No, no, Diane. You've got to lead them. Like this. You missed two. Yeah. Well, that's because you've got me all shook up, Diane. Great. That makes it a good day for the ducks. I didn't want to hit one anyway. Oh, now can we get out of this cold, damp blind, or whatever you call it, and go pretend we're civilized human beings? Well, if I take you back there, will you act like one? Oh, what does that mean? Diane, will you, uh, let me make an honest woman of you? Our mystery drama, The Eighth Deadly Sin, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Patricia Elliott and Larry Haynes. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule. I'll be back shortly with Act One. This is a love story, pure and simple. Or come to think of it, not all that pure and certainly not simple. It concerns two complicated and fascinating people. Two people well enough known in their public lives to be, if not celebrities, at least household names. But two people whose private lives they have maintained peculiarly as their own. The first can speak for himself. The other will have no trouble in establishing herself as time and our story develop. The name is Gary Winter. By profession, a writer. By persuasion, a wanderer. Both of which I work at hard. Or did, some million years ago. Let me be exact. Some three months, three weeks, three days, and 17 hours ago, I heard the whispering rustle of a taffeta skirt behind me, turned my head, and lost myself forever. On a woman. One woman. A certain woman to the world. But to me, my woman. What makes your eyes so big, Mr. Wolf? You. I plan to gobble you up. You might have trouble digesting me. Yeah, but what a way to die. But why do you have to die? Ah, uh, for love? That isn't only outdated. You have an urge to say something profound? Uh, yeah. Why don't you and I get out of here? My name is Diane Summers. I suppose I'm hardly the most popular woman in America, either with women or with men. Oh, I'm still a successful movie star, but that may be the result of the hate-love syndrome. Men distrust me because they think I want to emasculate them. Women, because I don't conform. I'm too outspoken, and I haven't ever married. The press has built me in the image of women's lib. <laughs> I don't mind that. I'm all for anything that liberates anyone, including women. But that is a philosophy, not a cause. I don't like straight jackets anywhere. I am a non-conformist. But I'm still a woman, 
looking for a man that I haven't yet found. Or have I? Where are we headed for? Now, there is a monumental question I was just asking myself. I would have never thought of you as indecisive. Oh, I'm not normally, but uh, you kind of scare the lymph out of me. <laughs> the what? It's the lymph. One of the body's three most important fluids. Blood being the first. Right. But I don't scare that out of you. No, no, lady. You just make that boil. I make a lot of people's blood boil. Mostly for one reason. Well, just one reason for me. Excuse me. This is where we turn. Turn what? Into my garage. Maybe, uh... Maybe into a new world for us both. Where we are. Not alone anymore. <laughs> the way it began, Gary and me. When we met, I knew who I was, or thought I did. I know Gary was sure. He knew who he was, as I had from the first time he spoke to me, the top byline in world coverage. Wherever the action was, that's where you'd find Gary Winter. And the man could write like a dream. There was no question we were made for each other. Or to destroy each other. The only question was, which was it going to be? No, 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 Diane. You've got to lead them like this. Ah, uh -huh, you missed too. Yeah. Now that's because you have me all shook. Great. That makes it a good day for the duck. I didn't want to hit one anyway. Oh, can we get out of this cold, damp? blind, or whatever you call it, and go pretend we're civilized human beings. Well, if I take you back there, will you act like one? Why? Isn't it time we were married? Not really. Who says you? You want to be married. No, I didn't say that. You didn't have to. Diane. Diane, I'm uh, going away on this African story. And Lord knows when I'll be back, or if. You'll be back, lover. You are indestructible. Oh, no, no, no. no. No, I'm not indestructible. Nobody is when the bullet with your name on it finds you. No, I'd like to buy a little piece of immortality. We haven't much time left for that. I mean you. I mean you, darling. That's all I need. Something to leave whatever is left over of me. I must say, this is the most lugubrious proposal I've ever listened to. Well, I... It would be if I really thought for a moment I wouldn't turn up again. Hey, listen. W would you like to go with me? Oh, sure. And break all the contracts I've already signed. Well, why do you have to be famous? Would you love me if I was obscure and ugly? No, that is not the point. It took me long enough to find you. I don't want to go a continent away not knowing whether or not by the time I get back I may have lost you again. Now we're down to basics. Well, why not us like anyone else? Maybe because I'm scared. I don't know if I'm ready. I'd ask an awful lot, Gary. I have an awful lot to give. But it doesn't make much sense for us right now. Maybe after you've finished covering your African story and I complete my picture in Italy, we, we've only known each other a month. Give us time before we make a commitment. I've already made mine. I'm not ready yet. If you'll ever be... Okay? If that's the way you want it. So, Gary went to Africa and I went to Rome. It wasn't exactly a goodbye. Just slow death. There were some letters at first and then they petered out. <laughs> like our affair. Perhaps just as well. So I finished the picture and accepted a two-week engagement at the Café Louvois in Monte Carlo where I could sing sad songs and have a love affair safely with every man. Well, I tried to wipe Gary Winter from my mind. The African thing was more than I bargained for. I got trapped behind the lines and it was two months till I got back to civilization. From Dar es Salaam, I called Rome, but Diane was gone. I hopped a jet there anyway. By the time I got to Rome, the hottest human infrastructure in years had broken. 
And the first thing I had to do was go interview the man who caused it. So I catapulted from Rome to Monte Carlo and to Diane. From the window as I ride, I can see the shimmering beauty of the Mediterranean. And above my head, the sun is swimming in the bright noonday gold. The color of the sea is a woman's eyes. And the sun is the burnished gold of her hair. One woman. And the churning rush of the wheels makes a song of her name in my blood. Diane Summers, Diane Summers, Diane Summers. <laughs> And tonight I'm sitting at the bar at the Casino Louvois in Monte Carlo, listening to Diane sing. Suddenly I can't bear to share her with the entranced crowd. I leave my drink untouched and thread my way through the tables and backstage. Gary! Diane. Surprised? Why shouldn't I be? You left me a half a world away. You didn't even leave me that. You carry my whole world with you. Still? Yes. Diane, why did you run away from here? I didn't run away. I finished the picture. You were in the heart of deepest Africa. I had an offer to sing at the casino. A fabulous offer, I might add. Why not? I like it better than Las Vegas. And you did stop writing. Well, the mail service in the African bush is lousy. Oh, my darling. Gary, aren't you going to kiss me? I don't know. What's wrong? Nothing. Everything. No, for 24 hours, ever since I heard your name again and found out where you were, I've waited for this very moment. A schoolboy at his first exam, an explosion about to happen. And now it's here. Yes, Gary. It's here. It's real. It's happened. Oh, Carrie, how long can you keep a girl waiting? This long. I think perhaps I want to sit down. Me too. You know, as soon as I got back to civilization, I called you in Rome. No answer from your apartment. I tried to reach the producer, the set. Nothing. The movie was all locked up and in the can. You know how everyone disappears once it's over? Yes, I know. I called my paper in the States. They said they'd track you down. But first, there was this assignment they wanted me to cover as long as I was in Italy. And once I talked to the guy, I didn't have to find you anymore. He told me where you were. Diane, were you trying to hide from me? Hardly. With my name in lights three feet high in front of the casino. Well, why didn't you leave word for me? I just didn't think of it. I see. Why did you stop writing? Because I thought you had. You sure? What else? Another man. All men. Oh, now that's childish. Well, I'd still like the answer. Why do you always have to question everything? Because I'm a writer, maybe. Why do you hate answers? Maybe because I'm a woman. Well, because you have a guilty conscience. Guilty? Guilty of what? Because there was another man, at least one. Where did you get that information? Now, why should I hide anything from you? In jail, beloved. Jail? Yes, in a way, you put me there. In search of a man who today is front page news all over Italy. A man named Francesco Coretti. Francesco? Yes. Now, come on, Diane. Don't act surprised. You know him better than I do. Perhaps. Diane, tell me, what happened here in Monte Carlo between... Oh, Gary, really? Do you always have to probe? I don't feel like talking about Coretti tonight. I'm tired. Can't it wait for tomorrow? Yeah, I guess. Like almost everything else about us, it always has to wait for tomorrow. So there it was again. In the brightest moment of reunion, the flaw revealed. The wound opened. The thing that stands between Gary and me always. Trust. Belief, whatever you want to call it. The basis of any commitment, because every woman's instinct told me that what had passed between Francesca Coretti and me, he could never understand.
So, after all, in this simple love story, it appears that there is mystery. And why not? For after all, what mysteries are deeper and more complex than those that lie buried in the human heart? I shall return shortly with Act Two. Francesco Coretti, on the front pages of every newspaper in Italy. If I told you that he is the idol of every flower girl, teenager, middle-aged matron, to say nothing of a large cross-section of the male population, what would you guess? An Italian Elton John? An Etruscan John Denver? None of these. What makes him a national headline? We'll have to go back to our story for that. And Diane Summers. It is morning now. And Gary and I ride sun-drenched in a fiacre while a sleepy driver and a resigned horse draws us up along the heights above the Mediterranean. That's a beguiling view. Yes. And you are a beguiling woman. Am I? Oh, no false modesty, please. You know what you are. I'm the one who doesn't quite know. Can't you take anything at face value, Gary? I don't know. I'd like to know more about Francesco Coretti and you. Didn't he tell you? Some. I'd like to know the rest. Must you know a woman's every secret, Gary? Yours. Would you? Really? My sordid affair with Francesco? Very well. Here's a young man, a nobody, really a nothing, who is a diamond courier. He's on his way to Rome with a pouch full of diamonds in his pocket worth three million francs. He also has an idea, or an obsession, or a, call it what you will, in his head, that he has a system to break the roulette wheel. So, he stops in Monte Carlo. But the system backfires, and he gambles it all away. Right? Right. Wrong. Oh. Wrong, Gary. Foolish. But under the circumstances, a little magnificent. What do you mean, magnificent? Well... Why am I telling this story? You're the one who went after it. I liked his story. Liked it so much, I went to find out more. I talked to Francesco for an hour. He didn't know when he gave himself up that the money had been returned. There is nothing to tell, senor. I am a thief. I stole. I wish to be punished. Okay, okay, but why? Why did you steal? Why do men do many strange things? For the last five years, I have traveled for the firm I work for to Monte Carlo to buy diamonds. Diamonds in Monte Carlo? You must understand the fever of the wheel, senor. Rings, necklaces, bracelets are pawned for a fraction of their value to try to make up for lost money. I buy them for a slightly larger fraction only to bring them back to Rome. I should know the fever of the wheel too well, but like... Everyone else, I watch and I think I have a system. All those years, I have wanted to try it. This time, before I used the money to buy the diamonds, I could not resist. And you used your firm's money to gamble? At first, it was only what I could pay back from my savings. If I lost, too bad. And then the fever was on me, and I used for the first time what was not mine. I would pay it back with my winnings. But the wheel refused to smile, so the next night, that the second night, I came back to the wheel, and it took all the money till I was penniless. Oh, my. Why did you do such a stupid thing? I had my reasons. But it no longer matters. The first only was important. But you'd resisted all these years. Why this time? I will not say. Don't you realize what a story you are? The whole country is buzzing. Walk out in the street and a thousand dark-eyed beauties would marry you tomorrow. You are one with the heroes who become immortal lovers. Of course. There's the answer. A woman. There has to be a woman. Uh, that's what you meant by the first. Not huh? be a now, of course, a woman. Now, why didn't I see that from the beginning? Now, tell me, what was she like? Was oh, she? Well, she. Come on now, just between us, Francesco. You want to talk about her? What was she like, huh? Oh, Senor, how could I say? 
Have you been in the north of Italy where our women are blonde and their skin shines as if it had been uh, washed in the sun? You take all of those women, distill one who is the essence, and they would be drab compared... I can remember her scent, sharp and yet as sweet as the lemon trees which cling to the hills where I come from. I remember it faint and not to be forgotten. This was such a woman. Yeah. Yeah, I can understand. There's such a woman in my life. Uh, what is her name? That nah, doesn't matter. Diane, as it happens. But what I... Diane? Yeah. The Signorina Diane Summers, no? You, you know... You know Diane? You know where she is? I... Uh, I knew her. And when I did, it was at the Casino Rua in Monte Carlo. How did you know her? Because she was singing there. It was there I went to listen and to gamble for her love. Oh, senor, do you mind that? Yeah, you're darn right I do, but that doesn't matter for the moment. Is that where she is? Is she still there? I think so. Do you know what, man? I love you. Uh, because through me you have found the senorina. Or what else? So, now you can leave. No, no, not yet, Buster. Now we've opened the gates, let's see what comes out. Ah, uh, come on now, tell me, tell me about Diane. Perhaps so now I can. Now we are sympathetic. I am a small man, senor. Oh, not in the stature, perhaps, but in the life. I came to Monte Carlo with the money to buy the diamonds. That one night I went to the Casino de Bois, a little thing, you understand? Mm -hmm. And there, there was Diane. The club was crowded as she sang, but for me... She sang to me, alone, see? After that, I sent her flowers, notes, telephoned, and uh, all the world unanswered. I was... How can I say it? How can I make anyone understand it? Everything was lost for love of her. All right, you don't have to lay it out for me. So when I could not seem to win her... All the time the wheel was spinning, saying, Win with me, as you know you can. Win with me, and you can have anything you want. Even her, Francesco. Even her. I should have been concentrating on the game, but somehow I was more conscious that far off, she was talking to the owner of the casino, Bragiotto. And I felt that she was talking only of me. It's an intense pleasure to have you here at the gaming room, Signorina. I'm happy to please you, Signor Braggiotto. Always. I wish that were as sincere as it sounds. But it is. After all, you are my employer. <laughs> Which gives me special privilege. Of course. No, no, no. You're making fun of me. All right, I deserve it. I am clumsy with words. I could wish that our relationship were more... Uh, Intimate. You mean you would like it if we were friends? Yeah. And on that basis... Good. Then as one friend to another, I am interested in the young man who has been losing so heavily these past few days. The one at the uh, center table. Ah, uh, yeah. His name is Coretti, I believe. Non importante. Rich? He has money. And of course, that is all you care about him. What would you, Signorina? It's my business. Oh, the money. Is it his own? <laughs> That signorina is his business. What else did I expect you to say? He seems to have lost again. He's leaving the table. Yes, well, the bell can excuse me, but perhaps I'd better... Let get... me take over for you and make the gesture of friendship, Signor Braggiotto. They say that misery loves company. You? You always win. At the table, perhaps, at games of chance. I think what I need is a breath of fresh air. Excuse me. Senor. Huh? What? It's a long way down to the railway tracks, Senor Coretti. You. You know me? But the Signorina Summers. You know me? No, you. Uh, mia carissima, no, you. Then call me Diane. Diane. And your name? Francesco. 
Francesco. The mist is very heavy tonight. So heavy one would think you could not see. Ah, yes. There they are. The railroad tracks. Far down. Are you in such a hurry to catch a train, Francesco? I... I was... Was he in a hurry to escape? From yourself? Yes, if you wish it from myself. That's not the way. The only way when life, honor, hope, everything is gone. I don't think so. A man can always hope. For what? Fulfillment. Excitement in living. The desire to go on a future with... With a woman. A woman? Do you mean... Can, can I... You... Why not? If you wish it. It could be me. But, but the end... Francesco. Oh. All right now, Francesco. Suppose we sit down together, you and me, and watch the mist drift by, and you can tell me how you lost the money and just how your life fell apart. And then together, perhaps we can... Dream a dream to put it all together again. And suddenly I had to pour out my whole sad story. And she listened and smiled softly and washed away my tears as as tenderly as only my mother did a long time ago. And I thought how near I had been to death. And how close I was to heaven that moment. And I remembered, as I shall remember all my life, that one kiss. So I listened that I came back to Rome and I gave myself up. Today, I am a very important personality because I insist on being punished. No, I am not worth that. But she... Sanctissima, Sanctissima. Signor Coretti. I don't know what to say. You think, uh... She's really in love with you? Uh, Signor Winter. That is a miracle in which no man... Would dare to believe. Diane, was it you... Who returned the money for him? Of course, my beloved inquiring reporter. I was the culprit. I returned the money. But why? Why? Oh, perhaps a little for love. Love? Oh, come on, Diane. You can't be telling me that you could love this nobody, this idiotic male Elsie Dinsmore. A nobody, yes. Idiotic, of course. But oh, what a romantic gesture he made. What woman could resist him? Maybe it was just a maternal instinct. Tell me, just how did you bring off this really impossible trick? Trick? Yeah. How did you create three million francs out of midair and return the money that was stolen? Ah, that was easy. Remember Gino? Who? A man, darling. They do have their uses every now and then. <laughs> No, we are not going to meet all the men in Diane's life. There are limits of time and space. But we are heading for the answer to some questions. And perhaps some answers that Gary would prefer not to have. If you'll rejoin me shortly for Act Three. On that headland, magical in the late morning sunlight... Warm in the fiacre under a blanket, Diane and Gary should be lovers remet and be lost in each other. But instead, there are things still unexplained that lie between them like a sword. First one man, Francesco, and now another, the manager of the casino, Gino Borghetti. With a sigh, Diane must explain him, too, and he will not be so easy. How does Gino get into this picture? He runs the casino. So? So, that's where Francesco lost the money. Gino was the only one who could pay it back. Oh, sure, sure, great. All you did was ask him to. Well, not exactly. 
You see, after Francesco left me on the balcony, I sat for a long time watching the mist eddy in the lights of the casino. I thought of what Francesco had done and how wrong it was, and I thought of what I had sent him off to do and how right it was. Or was it? <laughs> what I really thought to myself on that balcony was how dangerous it is for any of us to play God at any time. And I tried to think of what I could do to correct a silly mistake by an otherwise fine young man. I went back into the gaming room to find Gino. Ah, Signorina Dion. I was concerned over you. It's a bad night to be out on the balcony. The uh, young man, correct? If I had not gone out on the balcony when I did, well, the money he lost was not his to lose. It's like war, too bad. Did you know? He had a certain air. No, of course not. I suspect. Have you no pity? <laughs> Where gambling is concerned, only percentages, Signorina. I see. I wonder, Signor. Can you conceive of a gamble in which the odds are even? Yeah, possibly. But even then it would be defeated by the unknown factor. Which is? The human one. For example? Well, in a game with you, Signorina, I might be afraid to accept even odds, remembering the human factor. I find you so, uh, so persuasive, I'm afraid you might tempt fate in the same way. Meaning you wouldn't risk a game with me? Well, of course, you depend on the stakes. How about for all the money young Coretti lost, one game, win all, lose all? I think by all odds this must be a private game. Will the uh, Signorina be kind enough to follow me? This is a small private room for games of no limit. Will you enter? Thank you. It's singularly well appointed for its purpose. Parlor, bath, bedroom, and bar. And if I serve you some wine or drink? Not yet, if ever. Let's consummate our wager first. Oh, by all means. As you see, the apartment has other basic functions. A green base table, bright lights. Uh, what's your preference, Signorina, for our wager? Hmm? Chemin de fer, piquet. As long as I'm American, I'll ride with the dice. Not the best odds. Or the worst. Twenty-one would favor you more. I'll stick with the dice. As you prefer. And uh, why are we speaking of odds, Diana? Oh, I beg your pardon? Think nothing of it. What's a name between friends? I will hope that's a prophetic statement. We were discussing an even game, but I'll try to better those odds for you. The dice are yours. You're most gracious, senor. <laughs> Your odds improve, dear. Five and a three. Beyond question. Eight is your point. Allow me? No. I handle my own dice. Take your hand off mine. There's one question first. If I lose, I can pay. Can you? I think you can trust me, senor. I always pay my debts. I wanted to make sure that we understood each other perfectly. <laughs> my profound apologies, Benissima. The dice are yours. Buona fortuna. There it was. The whole story neatly packaged and delivered. A man saved first from death and then from dishonor. In a daring gamble by the incredible woman who nestled by my side in a hired carriage as we drove back down the hill to her apartment. But all the way through the slanting afternoon sunlight, something nagged at my mind, incomplete, unanswered. And suddenly I had it. The question which seemed... To scream for an answer. Home, Gary. Yeah, home. What's the matter, darling? I've been thinking. Oh, such a dangerous occupation. Yes, isn't it? 
I've been thinking about three million francs. That's what I like about you. Your thoughts are never small. Yeah, this one is small and very mean, but it's there, and I've got to know. Maybe you'd better let it go. No, I can't. That's what I was afraid of. So? Three million francs. That sounds like a figure in the national budget. It's a lot of money, so? So, if you had lost your game of chance with friend Gino Bragioti, could you have afforded to pay... I'd hoped you wouldn't think that question was necessary. Oh, but I do. Then I'll answer it the way I answered Gino. I always pay my debt. Oh, come on. That's not an answer. It's an evasion. What do you want of me, Gary? What are you trying to prove? I want you to level with me. Let go of my arm, Gary. You're hurting me. Thank you. All right. I'll level with you. The debt has been paid, the money returned, the chapter should be closed, but you are not satisfied with the ending. You feel that there's another gimmick, a twist within the twist to make it a story to satisfy you as a writer. That's the whole point, isn't it, Gary? The question in your mind isn't really, if I had lost. What you really want to know is, did. Isn't that your question, Gary? Did I win, or did I lose? <laughs> Yes, that was the question. I look at Diane, tall and slim and clean. I look in her eyes and they're sad, infinitely sad. I've hurt her. I've cut right through the shining armor she wears on her soul and plunged a knife right into her heart. But it's too late to draw back. I have to have the right answer, the other I could not take. All right, then. Which? Lose or win? How dare you? How dare you, Gary? Diane. Don't touch me. I want you to go. Go? Yes, just leave and don't turn, don't ever look back. Why? Because I asked a question, one lousy question. No, Gary, not that. Then what? Because I love you. And I suppose we'll always love you because you love me, but will never trust me. It is as simple as that. Simple? Yes. There's nothing complicated about faith. You either have it or you haven't. You haven't. And there is one thing about me that will never change. Whatever I am, you must take on trust. That's why we're no good for each other. <laughs> so there's the real answer to your question, Gary. It should never have been asked. Goodbye. <laughs> Where does an animal run when it's hurt? I had to drown the pieces of the dream. In the bottom of every glass, Diane's eyes hurt and accusing. In the mirrors behind the bartenders, a thousand memories. In the smoke that fogged each bar, a picture of Diane. I stood up so suddenly that the bar stool went crashing to the floor. I didn't notice it or the startled people or the grim-faced bartender bearing down on me. Because suddenly... Suddenly, I had faith again, because I knew. In the cab to the casino, it was all clear. Sure, I knew how Diane threw her money around, was always broke, but there were always her jewels. I mean, who thinks of a woman wearing tens of thousands of dollars worth of jewelry, but Diane did. What you looked at wasn't fake. Like everything else about her, it was real. But she wasn't at the casino. I ran through the streets to her apartment, my newfound faith bright and shining, a gift to bring her. The rooms were deserted. Even her perfume was beginning to fade. Just one thing was there, a note on the rug inside the door. I thought it was for me, and so I opened it. But listen to Diane. Last night, I gambled and lost. The stakes were high, but on my side meant little. It was only money. May I hope that you are not gone forever. If you return, I can only hope that our game is not ended. Signed, Gino. So here I am alone in Monte Carlo, with no one to blame but myself. What is there left but to go join Gino? Those are sweepers. We have up here. A lot of credit, senor. Yeah, that makes two of us. I ought to belt you one. Because you're a loser? No, not at the tables, with Diane. Oh? 
<laughs> we are comrades in misfortune. Now, what the devil does that mean? Now, don't get violent again. I only meant that we both, well, what should I say, have loved and lost. You mean that? Why would I lie? What would I gain? So, senor, you see, the house doesn't always win. So now I'm on the terrace looking down through the mist at the twisted ribbons of the railroad below. And perhaps I feel very much as Francesco did in his moment of truth. What I feel is very, very humble. Were you thinking of jumping, Gary? What? Diane. I had to come back. Were you? Thinking of jumping? Yes. No. No, not for a moment. I was wondering how I could find my way back to you. That's what I thought. Until suddenly I was here. Do you mean you want to take a chance on us? I'm here. Yeah, but I'm... I'm possessive, difficult, and obviously stuffed to the eyes with male hormones. <laughs> I'm quick to resent, independent, and quite frequently insufferable, but... I love you. And I'm a gambler. What are you gambling on this time? Nothing. Not a thing. I'm just betting that you and I don't have to gamble on anything for the rest of our lives. Except each other. Diane. You just won the parlay of all time. story could have ended. Why should Diane come back to a man who didn't trust her? Is it sensible to suppose that a man as jealous as Gary would suddenly open his mind? That's for all of you to answer. I only hold a mirror up. What you see or hear in that reflection, I can only hope is what I thought you would. I shall return shortly. The story of jealousy is as old as time. From Lilith, Adam's fabled first wife, who, for jealousy of Eve, became the serpent who passed the fatal knowledge that drove them out of Eden, through Othello, who killed his love Desdemona for jealousy, down to today, where someone in every morning paper is a story of jealousy and the destruction it causes. Almost every story of jealousy ends tragically. I thought... For once, we should have one with a happy ending. Our cast included Patricia Elliott, Larry Haynes, and Ian Martin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by x -Life. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>